Uh-oh. There might be some trouble in paradise with Apple's new A17 Pro chip in the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. That's saying Pro way too many times. They gotta change something. Anyway, the A17 Pro in the iPhone 15 Pro is a completely new chip, or so we were told. In the keynote, Apple wasted no time touting their 3 nanometer architecture thanks to TSMC's new process that allows some incredible gains in their new chips. They've got a brand new GPU that is not just just 20% faster, but also includes ray tracing, hardware accelerated ray tracing for the first time. And that is honestly incredible. But there was something that stood out as not standing out, the CPU. It's the same general design that Apple has been using since the A11 Bionic. It has two performance cores and four efficiency cores. However, Apple only quoted a 10% improvement in performance, which seems underwhelming considering that we're going to this new three nanometer process that provides up to 15% improvement in performance at the same power consumption. That's quoted by TSMC. So how was Apple not able to hit those figures? And in fact, now that the launch event has concluded, we're starting to see some Geekbench scores show up and they confirm that we're looking at about 9.5% speed improvement compared to the A16. And understandably, a lot of people are confused and underwhelmed. How did Apple manage to undershoot TSMC's baseline expectations for what you could do with this new architecture. Why is it only 10% faster instead of 15 or more? And why is the chip seemingly no more efficient with battery life remaining the same on the 15 Pro compared to the 14 Pro? This, this is honestly a perplexing thing. And honestly, I'm confused as well. I was expecting a little bit more in terms of performance gains, and I was certainly expecting some efficiency gains when you're moving over to this three nanometer process. Now, to be clear, I don't really care about the performance of the iPhone. I couldn't give a damn whether it's 10% or 20% or 50% faster because it's an iPhone, it's running iOS. They've felt plenty fast for at least six years now. But the bigger issue is that the A17 Pro is going to form the foundation for the rest of the Apple Silicon lineup that springs out of it. So this GPU with ray tracing is going to make its way into the MacBook Air in a couple of months, which is crazy to think about but very cool. Less cool, however, is that underwhelming CPU performance gain. We're taking that A17 Pro that only has 9.5% gains, and we're gonna be extrapolating that all the way out to $10,000 Mac Pros. However, it didn't take the internet long to get to the bottom of this confounding mystery. A Twitter user has unearthed some information from Weibo that seems to indicate that the A17, at least the CPU portion of the A17, is just a rebadged A16. They say that by matching the core codenames with comments, it appears that H14 corresponds to the A15 chip, H15 to the A16 chip. However, there's no H16 label. Instead, it's called H15 call. That's a little weird. Did Apple basically just copy and paste their CPU portion over to this new process and just call it a day? Take the 10% gains and dip? It's weird, right? Why would they do that? And it's especially weird when you consider that the A16 is a tweaked version of the A15 and the A15 is a tweaked version of the A14. So it's now going on four consecutive chips where they've basically just tweaked the same design just a little bit. It's definitely giving Intel 14 nanometer process, which went on for like 15 years seemingly. So folks, this is a weird one. It seems that Apple has not really focused on the CPU this time around, perplexingly, when going over to a completely new lithography. But instead, the big show here is the GPU. I'm honestly a little conflicted about this because of course, I would have loved to see Apple just absolutely blow us out of the water with a new GPU with ray tracing and a new CPU with more efficiency and more performance. They could have absolutely blown the roof off of the tech industry with this chip. 
And then they could have kept doing it again with the M3 and the M3 Pro and the M3 Max and the M3 Ultra. They could have had the most incredible generation of chips. But again, I do want to reiterate that it's an iPhone chip. I'm, I'm really not that upset about the performance in the iPhone. This thing is definitely still a very powerful chip. In fact, the A17 Pro is really nipping at the heels of the M1 chip in terms of performance. So even these slow year over year gains are adding up, but the real disappointment isn't the iPhone, of course. It's the M3 and the rest of that lineup that's gonna be based on this chip. It would have been nice to also have a significant leap in CPU technology. But it seems like Apple doesn't want to play it that way. So some people are considering this another stopgap chip. I'm not necessarily sure if I would consider it a stopgap, considering that uh, the CPU is a holdover, but there's a lot else to be excited about with this chip. Remember, the A17 Pro also adds a USB 3 controller, which enables up to 10 gigabit per second speeds. The neural engine is up to twice as fast. And of course, dedicated engines for ProRes, Pro Display, and AV1 decoding. So you could definitely make the case that the A17 Pro might not be a super huge deal in terms of the CPU on its own. But when you look at it in totality with the USB controller and this new ray tracing GPU and all of this stuff put together, I think it's still a pretty big deal. So the disappointment is definitely there. I'm not going to lie, but the excitement is also there. I think Apple's GPUs needed more work than the CPUs anyway. I mean, when you look at Apple Silicon, uh, the CPUs are extremely fast and extremely efficient. They might not be able to compete with the very tippy tippy top of what AMD and Intel have to offer, but Apple's entire systems use less power than just a single CPU or a single GPU in a PC. So I'll grant them that. But chucking in that GPU with 20% more performance and ray tracing, that's gonna be crazy. And I really can't wait to see what happens when that comes to the rest of the Apple Silicon range. And if you can't either, make sure to get subscribed, leave a like down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this scandal, controversy, I don't even know what to call it. Whatever you want to call it is fine. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.